Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I stand here in support of the budget. I, sup I stand here in support of the estimates of revenue and expenditure as presented by the Minister for Finance, the Member of Parliament for Castries East and Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I will spend some time on the agency which I was given responsibility for to indicate to you, Mr. Speaker, to indicate to you and honorable members what allocations have been made and to give you a very brief overview of our performance. Mr. Speaker, we do not have time today to go through everything in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, but Mr. Speaker, I will do my very best to give you a broad overview. Also, Mr. Speaker, I'm once again very privileged to be representing a dynamic rural constituency, a place of great value, a place of love, a place of excellence in all fields, Mr. Speaker, a place of passion called VA for North. And Mr. Speaker, I, I wish to ask you leave for just 30 seconds to recognize many community leaders and some people who have been in my political life throughout the time of my, of my sojourn in this politics who have joined me here and who have joined us in the House today. I wish to welcome them, Mr. Speaker. Many of them, Mr. Speaker, are the heart and soul of my campaign and you see a range of maturing individuals and very young individuals who are here today. Mr. Speaker, I wish to say to you that this debate demonstrates in no uncertain term, terms, Mr. Speaker, who is the better of the two managers. Is it this Prime Minister or the one who was Prime Minister before? It's very clear, Mr. Speaker, that the Member of Parliament for Castries East is the better manager and he's the one. He is the one, Mr. Speaker, the, the children of St. Lucia and the people of St. Lucia must rest their confidence in for the future, Mr. Speaker. The figures tell the whole story. And while they were busy creating air-conditioned spaces for horses, this Prime Minister came in and despite the challenges, you can see the growth, you can see the improvements, and at the same time, Mr. Speaker, lending a hand to those in need throughout, the, throughout St. Lucia. As has been said before, Mr. Speaker, there is something for everyone in this budget. The Minister for Finance allocated a total of $29.8 million, or 6.2% 6 of the development budget to the Department of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. In all, Mr. Speaker, recurrent and capital, a total of $191,077,400 to the department. I wish to thank the Minister for Finance for this. And Mr. Speaker, this is to go to the Health System Strengthening Project, the OECS Health Project, project supporting continuation of our COVID-19 response, the hospitals, the health centers, training and human resource development. Our goal, Mr. Speaker, is to strengthen the health system of St. Lucia and to march, continue to march towards the implementation of universal health coverage. I will, at this time, Mr. Speaker, give you an idea very briefly of some of the heads um, and, and some of the expenditure. Mr. Speaker, in 2024-25, we are hoping that the additional provisions which have been made will, for example, Mr. Speaker, assist the Cerebral Palsy Association and the Child Development Center. There are provisions to facilitate the work of the Quality Assurance Officer, which is a new area which we have introduced. There is work to under, there is, there is an allocation to under, undertake mold remediation at the Millennium Heights Complex. There's an allocation for the World Pediatric Associ Association, Mr. Speaker, an increase. There's an increase in the allocations to assist with medical assistance. We want to introduce a new area in relation to medical assistance and more of that in the, in, in the policy debate. There's an allocation to facilitate the upgrade of the blood bank. 
to facilitate the retrofitting of an area for the environmental health unit, to facilitate the purchase of additional fumigating supplies for the environmental health unit, and to invest in improved improve facilities for the environmental health department in, in, in the southern office, Mr. Speaker. We are also looking at provisions for the implementation of the St. Jude recommissioning project, allocations for exploration for the LACWA and Cicero wellness centers, Mr. Speaker. We are looking, we are looking, Mr. Speaker, to relocate the LACWA wellness center and also to rehabilitate or rebuild the Cicero Wellness Center, Mr. Speaker. And this year, we, we are making a, there's an allocation by the Minister for Finance to begin the exploration, the consultancy designs and that kind of thing, Mr. Speaker. Also, Mr. Speaker, we are looking to ensure that, that we strengthen the public health resilience for the COVID-19 project. Also, there is an allocation for the building capacity and resilience in the health sector to respond to COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, if you look in the, in, in the area of health and wellness, we are increasing allocations to the general me medical assistance vote. We are also strengthening, assisting the chief medical officer's office to strengthen the, their work. And overall as adjustment, Mr. Speaker, of an increase by $711,000 to the Environmental Health Unit. We promised, Mr. Speaker, that we would strengthen the Environmental Health Unit with all of the, of the challenges and the demands. Also, we are going to increase assistance in terms of human resource to the Sufre Hospital, the Pharmacy Unit, the Dental Unit, and the com Community Health Nurses and so on. So we have catered for increases, um, additional salaries, and so on. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of fin for Finance allocated an increase for the Millennium Heights Medical Complex to continue to facilitate payments to Narayana Consultancy, Mr. Speaker. And you'll hear a lot more about that in the policy. An increase for pharmaceuticals of $1.2 million. And an additional amount of six million dollars, six point six million dollars, to facilitate continued operations of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Once again, Mr. Speaker, I continue to thank the people of Saint Lucia, who continue to invest two point five percent. This two point five percent levy, who continue to invest the two point five percent levy, to allow us to make all of these continued investments in health. Mr. Speaker, the Cuban medical professionals, an increase in the amount to assist 112 Cuban medical professionals. And I continue to, to thank the government and people of Cuba for all of what they continue to do for St. Lucia. Elder care, Mr. Speaker, and increasing the allocations to do some additional work at, com at the comfort base in a citizen's home to increase the staff complement there so that we can increase the intake and also some work at the comfort bay citizen's home. Mr. Speaker, at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex um, work on, on the A&E &E, A &E unit, Mr. Speaker, $802,000, St. Jude recommissioning project, $400,000, the rehabilitation of, of St. Jude Hospital, $1.5 million, the, not rehabil rehabilitation, Mr. Speaker, of St. Jude Hospital at the stadium, and the opposition continues to say, if we are building a hospital, why are we doing work at the stadium? I keep saying, Mr. Speaker, that we are dealing with human beings and this government will not abandon its, its responsibility to ensure that even though we are at the stadium, the conditions there are improved. We started this project last year, Mr. Speaker, in 2022, and we have realized the following. We have removed um, the, the east and west wing canopies, Mr. Speaker, more re remediation in the admin building, Refurbish refurbishment of the resuscitation bay in the emergency, ro emergency room, refurbishing of the triage area, refurbishing and reconstruction of the West Wing security booth, refurbishing of the outpatient department, refurbishing of the microbiology and parasitology department in the lab, 
refurbishing of the inventory warehouse, more remediation, drainage works, the construction of a canopy for water diversion for the inventory containers, increased storage for pharmacy, emergency room, lab, outpatient departments, removal of the stadium chairs and metal frames in the stands, removal of the pole lines and the metal roofing, Mr. Speaker. We spoke about this in the last budget, and if you go to the stadium now, Mr. Speaker, everybody who passes there can see that we have reduced all of, all of these disaster, disasters waiting to happen, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, some additional funds are earmarked, and we are going to continue to do some, uh, some work, rehabilitative work on the admin building, the solar water system, the washroom showers, mold remediation, a septic tank and sewer system, we need to reconstruct that, Mr. Speaker. The rehabilitation of the operating room and their surgery unit, plumbing system, and, and other rehabilitative works, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank Mrs. Jeanette Hughes of the Health System Strengthening Project and the OECS project and her team for all of the work that they have done. I wish to thank uh, Mr. Neam Jabatis, although I wish to express condolences on behalf of the whole parliament. We know what he's going through now, the, the passing of his wife just a few days ago. But he is one of the key individuals in the ministry who works with the health system strengthening projects on the PBF project, Mr. Speaker. And a lot has been done. What have we attained, Mr. Speaker, over the last couple of years, Mr. Speaker? Provision of phlebotomy services to clients with di diabetes and hypertension. Mr. Speaker, 290 persons accessing service from the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, from Denry Hospital, Richmond, Jack Mel, Lacroix. 2,194 persons accessing services at the St. Jude Hospital, the Soufre Hospital, Monrepo, Deriso, Lafag Wellness Centers. We supplied 24 phlebotomy chairs for, for use at the wellness centers for, for the Universal Healthcare Project, Mr. Speaker. Renovations of the Dairy So Wellness Center. Replacement of air conditions at well, units at wellness centers island-wide. Ongoing procurement of supplies and medical equipment at the various departments. And so many other things, Mr. Speaker. Design of a health referral network completed. Design and development of an actuarial model, an actuarial analysis, and costing exercise for the Universal Health Coverage Program. We've developed the essential package of health services and financing mechanisms, Mr. Speaker. The design of the PBF and the implementation of it. Establishment of the management audit component of the PBF program completed. And so many others that I'm going to speak of in the policy debate. And Mr. Speaker, we have also implemented component four of this project. And in this budget, funds are made available to continue. What did we do last year? Very quickly, Mr. Speaker. We looked at, we supplied laptops and desktop communication equipment throughout the health system. We supplied lab consumables, equipment, and reagents for the emergency medical service. We supplied 10 vehicles, St. Jude Hospital. We supplied a panel van, pickup van, the ministry, three vehicles, central procurement for the pharmaceuticals and so on. We procured a panel van and a 4x4 pickup. The biomedical department, which we are fashioning into a uh, new department, we gave them a vehicle. Community nursing, Mr. Speaker, supplied them with a vehicle. And so many other pieces of equipment and vehicles and so on, all in an effort to strengthen the health system. Medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, and so forth, Mr. Speaker. This year, Mr. Speaker, we continue with the OECS Regional Health Project, and the Minister for Finance has ensured that we continue for our accomplishments. And what did we do last year, Mr. Speaker? The accreditation assessment for labs at the Ezra Long Lab and the St. Jude Hospital. These pro processes are underway, Mr. Speaker. We procured two chemistry analyzers for the Soufre Hospital and the Grosile Polyclinic, Mr. Speaker. Specimen transportation. I don't even want to go into what used to happen before, Mr. Speaker. It's too sad to speak about it. But what did, what, what did we do about it? We supplied vehicles so that 
Soufre and Grosile Polyclinic can transport specimens safely, Mr. Speaker. And we, we did that last year. Um, we equipped the two emergency operation centers at the View Fort Wellness Center and the Urban Polyclinic, Mr. Speaker. And there's a lot more. Provisions of data management software for both labs at the Owen King E Hospital and the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. We've spoken about the site exploration for Cicero and Lacroix, the reconstruction of the Laotian Wellness Center, Mr. Speaker. The member for Denry North spoke about it. Last year, we said we were going to do it. The member for Den Denry North insisted, Mr. Speaker, always asking me about this. And the Minister for Finance insisted that we must complete this project. And if you go to Denry North now, Mr. Speaker, I visited with the minister some time ago and the whole, and, the whole, um, and many of the leaders at the ministry and I want to congratulate the contractor, Mr. Speaker, who's doing a wonderful job. And this project will be delivered very soon, Mr. Speaker. The establishment of the Urban Polyclinic, we spoke about this last year. This year, $800,000 allocated. I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, that work continues. We now have to remove the entire roof of a particular part of Victoria Hospital, which we did not anticipate. But now work is ongoing as we speak. If you go there, Mr. Speaker, you will see we are removing the roof to ensure that we shift the Castries Wellness Center to the Accident and Emergency Unit at the Victoria Hospital. The intention is to temporarily locate the Castries Wellness Center there until, Mr. Speaker, we complete this year the rehabilitation of the Francis Dalto building, which will house the, the complete Castries Wellness Center, the urban polyclinic and, and primary care and so on. The Universal Healthcare Project, Mr. Speaker, I will not go into everything. I will leave it for the policy debate. But again, Mr. Speaker, the members opposite, especially the member for Miku South, they are all over the place, Mr. Speaker, criticizing our approach to universal health coverage. We have said to them, we are not like them, Mr. Speaker. Our job is to deliver to the people of St. Lucia. And whether we are delivering it to them stage by stage, we are delivering. But let me just tell you, Mr. Speaker, very quickly, since June 1st of 2023, a total of 1,658 expected mothers were registered on the, on, under the program. 1,658. And Mr. Speaker, expectant mothers were able to access routine lab and ultrasound services at the 17 wellness centers throughout St. Lucia, at 17. All around St. Lucia, Viewfort, Grosile, Bexon, I mean Babuno, Richfort, Deriso, Labry. And you know, we gave vouchers to the, the, the expectant, expectant mothers, along with lab, lab request forms for ultrasound to access the services. 1,643 individuals access phlebotomy services. 1,017 at the Millennium Heights. 446 at the St. Jude Hospital. A total of 1,302 clients benefited from radiology services under this initiative. So when the opposition says that's a waste of time, all I'm focused on, Mr. Speaker, is the ladies who are pregnant who are receiving all of these services without any cost to them, Mr. Speaker. That is what this government is about, without any cost to them. So instead of spending money to bring horses in air-conditioned containers, we are spending the money on our pregnant St. Lucians right here in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. On a DC-10. We are spending the money on our people in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we, continue, we will continue this year, and we are going to introduce the management of snake bites and so on, screening of, screening of, yeah, screening of chronic kidney disease, and many others. This year, Mr. Speaker, the Universal Health Healthcare Program will introduce another set of services. And we said so before. We are not perfect. Everything is not perfect. But we are not waiting for 20 years before we deliver to the people of St. Lucia. What are we going to do this year, Mr. Speaker? We are going to add, listen to me well, for those who say our approach is bad or it's wrong, we are going to add on top of the, the assistance to the pregnant ladies, 
we are going to add cervical cancer screening and HPV testing, prostate cancer screening, and snake bite management. Listen well, Mr. Speaker. So we had for pregnant ladies. So now we are going to add cervical cancer screening. Free of cost, free of cost to the, to the ladies. HPV testing, free of cost. Prostate cancer screening, Mr. Speaker, free of cost. And the Minister for Finance has made an allocation available for that. So I wish to advise all men, all ladies, early detection is the name of the game. And this government, led by the member for Castries East, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, this Prime Minister has put money in there for you. Premier Ministers have made l'argent à ministre de Santé pour aider, pour buy plus services à la universal health coverage. Cervical cancer, nous savons cervical cancer qui a tué un chaque monde en cette liste. Si vous détectez le bonheur, vous savez faire un about de so, la liste. Donc, nous avons fait cervical cancer screening et vous n'avez pas pour payer l'argent pour lui. Prostate, un chaque homme peut aller pour un test prostate et que l'année, un chaque homme qui a mort en cette liste parce qu'il y a une prostate cancer. Et prostate cancer, c'est docteur qui a dit si vous jouez un bonheur, ou ça tu étais Quand ça gouvernement a dit, nous avons bail à l'année à venir, prostate cancer test, ou pas qu'il n'y pour payer pour lui, nous avons deux manières, nous avons deux choses, et qu'on n'y pour aller avec des comme ça. Ça, c'est un groupe, un gouvernement qui concerne la vie, Jean pays, cette liste, M. Speaker. And M. Speaker, we will continue with the COVID-19 Health Resilience Project. M. Speaker, we will continue with the World Bank projects and allocations have been made in that regard. The hospitals, Mr. Speaker, allocations to the St. Jude Hospital, allocations to the Owen King E. Hospital, the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, which includes the mental hospital and turning points, and there is some work happening there to reform and rehabilitate the turning point service, and also the mental wellness center. There is a lot, Mr. Speaker. The reconstruction of the St. Jude Hospital at OG. This is a major policy initiative of the government, and work continues there. In the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, we will provide you with even more. Nous avons bâti l'hôpital St. Jude. Nous avons fini travailler dans l'hôpital St. Jude à OG. Ils ont l'air pour ces gens qui sont à stadium là, avec tout le travail là, qui a fait. Pour sa fête. Nous avons fait travail là bien, nous ne pouvons pas faire choc bloc. Dernier gouvernement, c'est croisé, il y a croisé le building, il y a mis tracteur dans le building, j'ai que l'église est croisé, quand nous devons faire l'église à l'hôpital là. C'est pour ça que l'épidémie est obligée de tomber à laisser les gens ça, M. Speaker. L'épidémie. Depuis c'est l'église qui est croisé. Il y a une chapel où les gens vont and pray pour leurs sick relatives and so on. This last government put a tractor in it. An excavator in it. There is a leg is why quasi up here, sir. Up here, sir. PDME. Only pull right there, truck, and so on. show to buy. Because why quasi leg is similar. Mr. Speaker, I wish at this time to say to you that there is a lot more in the policy debate when it comes to health, wellness, and elderly affairs. The whole policy and the forward movement of the universal health coverage, the wonderful work which is being done by our doctors in the private sector, in the public sector. And there are many examples I'll bring out to show you that the policies of this government, we're not talking policy today, okay? When we remove VAT on medical equipment, Mr. Speaker, the number of doctors in the private sector and the number of medical companies, you know, they have accessed it and the people of St. Lucia are benefiting. But we will come to that in the policy, Mr. Speaker. I wish at this time to thank the staff of the ministry. I wish to thank the permanent secretary, Ms. Jenny Daniel, for her hard work and her team in, the ad in administration. The chair of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, Ms. Re Ms. Afferton, Mrs. Afferton Reynolds, Dr. Stanley, the vice chair, the chair and the whole board, the chair of the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Elevik and Brother Norman Edward, chair and vice chair and the whole board, all the, both CEOs, Mr. Speaker, Ms. Lydia Atkins of St. Jude and Dr. James of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. I know that your job 
is very difficult, very taxing, Mr. Speaker. Healthcare, not only in St. Lucia, but all around the Caribbean and around the world, Mr. Speaker. It's challenging. You go to hospitals in New York or in Canada, you call your relatives in England or in New York or in Canada and ask them about the waiting times at the emergency departments at Kings County or any of the hospitals. Ask them about it. Even the more developed countries, the challenges are there. But what we are doing, Mr. Speaker, is to show tangible results, to show by way of the allocations of the Minister for Finance that we are moving in a direction that will cause us to have better health care in this country. I wish, Mr. Speaker, at the Ministry to thank all the heads of departments, my secretary, Ms. Magdalene Florius, my driver, Mr. Emmanuel, and all those who continue to, to help me to carry this load in the ministry. We have no choice, Mr. Speaker. We have challenges, but we have no choice but to follow the, dictate, the dictates of our Prime Minister and Minister for Finance and to ensure that we do the work in health care and to ensure that we have health care reform. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the Viewfort North constituency, and that is, why, uh, that is why I'm here, Mr. Speaker. That is why I'm here. No matter how much, I mean, I love the people in the, in the ministry and the work that we do, the only way I could have been there, Mr. Speaker, is, is through the hard work of the people of Viewfort North, and in particular, those who are on my teams, my campaign team, and those who pray for me, those who call me every day, those who get vexed with me sometimes and they feel they're right, I feel I'm right. But at the end of the day, we still drink some passion fruit juice together and we still move on and eat some salad together and so on. But Mr. Speaker, that is why I'm here, Mr. Speaker. I'm here because of the people of for North. And I want to speak to the budget, the estimates, and how it impacts the people of for North. I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, a very quick, a very quick story before, as I begin, Mr. Speaker. I became the Member of Parliament for VFO North in 2006. And between 2006 and 2011, Mr. Speaker, we were in opposition. And Mr. Speaker, in 2011, we won the government, and we stayed in office for four and a half years. Between November 2011 and June of 2016, four and a half years. Then we lost the government again. So we went back in opposition, before North, back in opposition. Between 2016 and 2021, we won in 2021, until and we are now in government for two and a half years going on three years so an aggregate of seven years in government where i could sit in the cabinet at the table and where i can speak to a prime minister as a member of his cabinet or even though i was not in the cabinet our party winning government so an aggregate of seven years mr speaker between 2006 and 2011 mr speaker except for the time when Dr. Robert Lewis and, and so on, and member for Miku North, Castries North, who was the Prime Minister, this constituency development program came about. During that time, Mr. Speaker, they offered me a, a, a bus shelter. The bus, one bus shelter was built, and maybe two drains. I have all the records. But apart from that, Mr. Speaker, as long as we're in opposition, and the Viewfort North constituency has suffered. So while I've been the parliamentary rep from 2006, this is the second time I've been given the opportunity by the Holy Spirit and the Prime Minister to be in a cabinet where I can advocate vociferously for the people of Viewfort North. Between 2016 and 2021, it's important for me to say this. The Barrow's Doctrine was the theme. The member for Miku South endorsed the Barrow's Bellro Do Doctrine, which meant that because Vifort North, the people of Vifort North did not support them, they gave us nothing. Paolo Metley, 
They gave us nothing. He has to walk out because it's shameful. They gave us nothing. And then they gave us nothing, Mr. Speaker. And then through their surrogates, through their surrogates, they said, they keep saying that Moses Jobatis is doing nothing for you. He ain't doing nothing for you. But they gave us nothing. Thinking that the people, exactly, what you vote in labor for, what you get, but the government gave us nothing. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to say. I'm proud to say, Mr. Speaker, there's a reason why the people of Vufort North continue to support the St. Lucia Labour Party. It's deep, it's ingrained within our psyche. What we view as development and what UWP has done to us and why we continue to vote the St. Lucia Labour Party. In May of this year, Mr. Speaker, the Vufort North constituency will mark 50 years of unbroken support to the St. Lucia Labour Party. 50 years. 50 years. Second money. Jean Vieux ka voté by Labour. Labo, oui. C'est même bagay la. Ordo Labo, oui, te commencé avant nous parce que yo te un plus gros constituency avec Vieux Fort. Mais yo te break, um, yo te kasse se constituency. 50 years, Mr. Speaker. And when I speak like this, that's why I speak like that. So we, 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 we are passionate about what we believe in. The office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, in the 1.6 million allocation, the distress fund is there. And the people of Vufort North in the past, when we were in government before, Mr. Speaker, we benefited from it. And members before me have spoken about the need for this. See, Kaya Monpuidife, Ek Malerezma, um, Yopani Duva Nide, Nusa Edeo Evexa. Head 21. Head 22, Mr. Speaker, an allowance is made of $100,000 to facilitate the summer employment program. And this has benefited many young people in VFO North last year, Mr. Speaker. And I look forward to many young people who, are just living, who have just left school, not left school, but who are on summer break to, to benefit from this. And I urge the young people to apply. I have this theme in Vufort North, get up and get. Do not just stay there and hear about the programs and you're not applying. Apply. So, Head 22, there is an opportunity there. The Shared Services Department under Head 22, over $460,000, Mr. Speaker. The Civil Status Registry, the Immigration Unit, and so on, will go down to the south. And this will benefit the people of Vufort North because it will, this would mean they would have to spend less money on transportation and so on to come up to Castries for very basic services. I'm very happy to see this here, Mr. Speaker. Head 41, agriculture, fisheries, and, and, and rural development and so on, Mr. Speaker. I see an allocation for the banana management unit project. And as you know, Nuni a shy farmer here for North, a shy farmer fig to Ju. And I'm, I'm looking forward to some benefits there for them. The expansion of the food crop production program, the cocoa sector enhancement project. We are very strong in the area of cocoa production and cocoa development, Mr. Speaker. Some of the individuals from VFO North who are here in the gallery today are very powerful cocoa farmers, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure they'll be happy to hear that there is even more support for them. Livestock development, fisheries, Mr. Speaker, at Savans Bay. There is an amount to continue to rehabilitate the jetty. I wish to thank the, the Minister for Finance and the Minister for Agriculture. Some work was done and there is more work to be done. Mr. Speaker, the timber is deteriorating and there is work to be done. I hasten to add, Mr. Speaker, that every time I speak to the fishers and the Seamoss farmers of Savans Bay, Mr. Speaker, I continue to implore them to take care of the facility, to keep the facilities clean keep the facilities clean, work together to ensure that the area has health and safety um, requirements that are positive, Mr. Speaker. Having the facility is just one thing, but to keep the facility clean because it's yours, Mr. Speaker. You are the ones making millions of dollars out of CMOS there. I continue to be available to assist them, Mr. Speaker. Head 42, the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, 
and Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, Mr. Speaker. The loan grant facility, I know there are individuals from VA4 North who are in, in the process of benefiting, and we are praying, Mr. Speaker, that the processes go a little faster because some of them, Mr. Speaker, are waiting. They told me just yesterday that it, things will work out for them, but I know that many of our small business people in VA4 North will benefit from this. Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, Mr. Speaker, everybody will speak about roads for their constituency. I am not here, uh, Mr. Speaker, list, I will not list all the roads, Mr. Speaker, they are, they are too numerous to mention, but I will say so, Mr. Speaker, that between 2006 and 2011, no major infrastructure projects in terms of roads were done in Viewfort North. Between 2011 and 2016, with the assistance of the now Prime Minister and then Minister for Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, we embarked on the completion or the start of a number of roads. The Back Street, Dimaï, Fondor, Moncayen, Culture Lane, Elliot Lane, Tevin, Mon View, Boisbleke, Vigier Drains, and Partial Surface of the Road. Mr. Speaker, between 2011 and 2016, there were roads to be done under the QAT program, Mr. Speaker. The Woodlands Farm Road, the Vigier Road, the Bamboo Road, the Bellevue Road, the La Bordeaux Road, Mr. Speaker, the Hope Estate, La Retreat. These are farm roads, Mr. Speaker. All of these were removed when or stopped together with the, the QAT package, which should have worked on the road from, from Castries to Grosely. All of this by the last government, Mr. Speaker, stopped. And between 2016 and 2021, you know about the Bell Rose Doctrine. We started the OPCO to Bellevue Road, Mr. Speaker, up to Zabo, and nothing else was done on it. Contracts were issued to contractors on Back Street, Elliot Lane, etc. Se muna te zani contract yon la meyo, Elliot Lane, kome se shimea, ki nou te za, kome se, Mr. Speaker. Ek le gouvernement vini, le gouvernement UWP a vini, yo tou bout se contract la. For a whole five and a five plus years, they stopped the works. I'm happy to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that a number of these roads, these small community roads, since coming into office in 2021, between that time and now, a number of these community roads have been completed, Mr. Speaker. I will not spend time to go through them, but I wish to thank the Minister for Finance, the Minister for Infrastructure, and the CDP program for, for some of it. The community roads are very important, very, very important, Mr. Speaker. And while some work was done on Morley Lane and Vivacell and Teva, Asukaya and so on, we really look forward to our major roads being done. Mr. Speaker, we, we don't have to describe them. You just have to drive. You just have to drive to Vijay from Canels. You just have to drive to Grace. You just have to go to Hope Estate. You just have to drive to Vijay, for example, Mr. Speaker. Bamboo. And you will realize La Bode. You realize, Mr. Speaker, that these roads really need to be done. These are main carriages, main, main roads into the communities. And these roads really require attention. And I know that the people of VA4 North have stuck with the Labour Party and they know why. And I can guarantee you, Mr. Speaker, that action will be taken and the people will see. I don't like to speak before I see. I've always told them so. When the tractor is on the road, that's why I'm an, that is when I'm going to announce it. I will announce it when, I, when the tractor is on the road. So I trust in our government, Mr. Speaker. As the people of Opicon and, and Asukaye and Vevacel and Perino Lane and Dimaï Road in Bellevue, many of these roads were never done, Mr. Speaker. There have been generations and generations of people living there. You can count over 150 years of families living there. I can go back. When you look at Teva, many of the people in Teva, they came from Teva, went to Bellevue and populated the area. When you look at Bellevue and Grace and Vigia and these places, these roads have never been touched. Mr. Cecil Le, God bless him, cut some of these roads when he was a member of parliament between 1979 and 1982. The 
Asukaya Road, the Vijay Road, Mr. Speaker. A lot of these roads, the Vijay Road only reached up to a point, and it was Labour Party, the St. Lucia Labour Party, and Mr. Cecil Lee who cut a lot of these roads. But since we lost in that time, and we took almost 30 years in the wilderness, a lot of these roads, Mr. Speaker, were not done, except in 1991-92 from Piero going to Deriso. Except that main road, Mr. Speaker, which was done during the time of Sir John, except that road, none of the other roads was done. So we have to cure this deficit, and we have started, Mr. Speaker. And we should thank the Minister for Finance. Some of you are, Mr. Speaker, no, 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 no problem she may have here for North. Like nous avons commencé à améliorer. Moi, je vous remercie, ministre des Finances, parce que nous avons fait un travail quand nous vivons en office. L'UWP en pouvoir, c'est caloté, il y a caloté ces gens parce qu'ils n'ont pas voté. Ces gens sont bien forts avec le Labour Party parce qu'ils savent, nous savons, que c'est le Labour Party qui a délivré. Et avec nous avons commencé à délivrer. Nous avons, Mr. Speaker, Chimea Opicon, Chimea Tervan. She may have Asukaye. She may have come place in Vefonov. She may have Vevasel. She may have Dimaï. Elliot Lane. And she has a place la, when the last government has been two of these contracts, Mr. Speaker. Zabo pour a belle vie. They have not continued. But the government has been able to do it. They have been able to do it. And the things that have started, 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 Mr. Speaker. Hope Estate and so on, the Woodlands Road, Bellevue Waterf Waterfall Road. Mr. Speaker, Head 44 Constituency Development Program. I wish, Mr. Speaker, to thank the Minister for Finance for his allocations under the Constituency Development Program. The Constituency Development Program, the funds there, Mr. Speaker, are committed by the Taiwanese government, and I wish to thank the government and people of Taiwan for their assistance to our communities throughout St. Lucia. Housing, infrastructure with small concrete roads, Mr. Speaker, drains, and in Viewfort North, what I have done, Mr. Speaker, I have taken or allocated a portion of it to assistance to micro, micro businesses, Mr. Speaker. A number of our micro businesses have received assistance through the injection of funds for them to purchase, whether it be refrigerators for their business, hair dryers, chairs for, for hair stylists, you name it, deep freezers, Mr. Speaker, a number of, of pieces of equipment, air conditioning units for barber shops, um, you name it, Mr. Speaker, all around VA for North. Um, sewing machines, Mr. Speaker, we purchase brand new sewing machines with the latest, the ability for the latest designs and all kinds of styles for the people who are interested in that kind of craft. And last year, we did it, and this year, Mr. Speaker, I'm finalizing a list to again provide to the micro-businesses in Viewfort North. And all of this is from the Constituency Development Program. The Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, Member of Parliament for Castries East, mandated that a certain percentage of the CDP must go to social programs, Mr. Speaker must go to social programs. Not the flashy things the last government was doing, that you cannot account for certain things, must go to social programs. And that is how, Mr. Speaker, I am able to allocate monies when people are in difficulty, Mr. Speaker. A caring government, we can't do everything, but when people are in difficulty, they come to the parliamentary office and we give them assistance as best as we can. Mr. Speaker, in many cases, Obviously, like many of my colleagues, we will not tell you who these people are or what they are going through or what we are helping them with. In some cases, when it is business or when it is certain things, we will, we will tell you. But in a number of cases, you will not know who these people are. But the accountability is there. The SSDF is the one doing the accounting, Ministry for Finance, and we are not given any monies People must bring in their invoices. So, so we are malade, we see, we have a to do. We have to go to St. Jude, we have to join an invoice, and we have to aide. Mr. Speaker. So that is what 
we are using the constituency development program for. Head 48 Housing and Local Government, Mr. Speaker, there's an allocation to continue the National Housing Assistance Program. Lani Plilaja Abijia, pour Ministre Responsabilité pour Housing, Member of Parliament for Castries Central, pour Banu Plis Sipo. Nous ajouons un Chai Sipo, et Oliwan Vie for North, Mr. Speaker, Ron Vie for North, Mr. Speaker. We have assisted many families with the refurbishment of their homes. There are a few cases of critical need where we had to rebuild the houses, Mr. Speaker, but most of the cases, either we replace the roof or the walls or the flooring. And Mr. Speaker, I will not give you the number, but we have assisted a number of people in VA4 North. And just today, Mr. Speaker, Work continues on, on, on one of them people. When they get the materials, Mr. Speaker, they go to the stores to get the, the assistance. Mr. Speaker, as I... As I for, you for North, you have 15 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Head 48, we continue with PROUD. And Mr. Speaker, as you know, the PROUD program, the OPICON area, has been part of the PROUD program for a very long time, since when we were in government between 2011 and 2016. And the work continued, Mr. Speaker, but the work, I'm hoping with the allocation this year that we can accelerate the works. Mr. Speaker, some surveys are being done. I know that surveys are ongoing, and the people of OPICON are eagerly waiting for, for the, the, the deeds and so on. And we are hoping, Mr. Speaker, that this program will there will be an injection in terms of the speed and so on this year. We should thank the Minister, Member of Parliament for Castries Central for, for the work. There are some challenges there, Mr. Speaker, and I always try my best to speak frankly to my people. There are some challenges. We have Opico, where there is proud. There is a piece of land at the top of Opico, Mr. Speaker. People from all everywhere believe that they can come to the top there squat and build houses mr speaker i have said over and over again that this land does not belong to the government when people come to my office i tell them so ale squat ale tet mon opikon yo kai tie kayou la parce que sa parte gouvernement this land belongs to the national insurance corporation and the national insurance corporation will come to claim their land <coughs> mr speaker i know that we have social problems and people squat at times but what this government is doing is try to regularize this so if you have squatted the government in with proud government can try garder qui manière yo ça a porté cette terre avec sous ça qui était là pour aider ou et qui manière qui côté terre no passage just all make kayou ne pot kote mr speaker which is not part of the of the program so i say so every time i speak in the parliament moun pa aime tan me di sa te a ki an let tete opikon sa pa te gouvernement the land does not belong to the government mr speaker i know very well and i can tell you this is where this is the general area where i live there are private lands on the other side where i live and right next to me, there is the Piero Plain Field. Invest in Lucia is surveying lands around the Piero Plain Field for sale. But beyond that, beyond the Invest in Lucia lands, the land belongs to NIC. From my home, I can see the NIC lands. Beautiful land. It doesn't mean you cannot own the beautiful land, but we have to do it properly, Mr. Speaker. NIC has to come in there, they, and they are going to come in there. I'm taking time on this. NIC kai vin la, yo kai apante, they will survey the area and possibly make lots available. But for now, I urge you, do not squat on NIC lands, please. Do not squat on NIC lands. So we are trying, Mr. Speaker, the Town and Village Council still on the head, 48, Mr. Speaker. Ministry of Local, Local Government. I wish to thank, in a very special way, the Chair, Mr. Lincoln Francis, and the Council of the, the Vifort North Constituency Council. They are doing a tremendous job, Mr. Speaker. They have caused to be constructed some beautiful bus shelters, some drainage works in the area, 
and I urge the, the Member of Parliament for Castries Central to give them even more money because the Council in Viewport North can they have some beautiful projects that they want to that they want to um, implement. Head 51, Ministry of Equity and Social Justice. In fact, Mr. Speaker, there's a bus shelter which was built by the council. You must go to Tetmon. You must go to Tetmon to see. That's a sample bus shelter in terms of up. No, it, does, it doesn't have upstairs and downstairs. But <laughs> it doesn't have salo yet. So I, I wish to thank all those who are working in the council. I wish to thank um, the contractors and everybody for doing some wonderful work. The Ministry of Equity, the after school program, the home care program for the elderly. Hope, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to it. Um, major rehabilitation of schools on the head 52. Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to report, and the Member of Parliament for Denry North has mentioned it, but I'm pleased to report that if you look at my mini manifesto for the last election, you will see the rehabilitation of the PRO combined school on it. And I'm pleased to report that we are starting that Remember process. Remember, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to report to the people, to the House, and also the people of PRO in particular, that we are going to begin this process with, with the construction of a section of the school from the, a block, a new block, from the loan from the Afro Exim Bank, and more details will be forthcoming. And this is the beginning of the total rehabilitation of the school plant. And, and we are hoping we are going to... 1.6 million has been allocated. And this is going to be a wonderful block, which will be the, the start of the rehabilitation of the entire school plant. Mr. Speaker, the Piero Combined School is one of the best performing schools in St. Lucia. And it has been so for many, many, many years. I wish to congratulate them for their work. And it's only fair that people like Mrs. Mooney and her staff, we had Mrs. Saltibus, Mr. Matthew Hutchinson, and uh, past principals and so on. It is only fair that that school, which is termite infested, it has a lot of problems, Mr. Speaker. And we are starting the process. We will continue. I also recognize that the other schools, like the Bellevue Combined School, the VJ School, and the other school, Grace Combined Schools, will all receive attention. I wish to thank the Minister and the Minister for Finance for the work on the, the roof of the Bellevue Combined School, which was done. There is more work to be done, the tiling and the doors and so on, but Mr. Speaker, I am sure it's going to come. Head 54, Youth Development and Sports. I am pleased with the provision, Mr. Speaker, for the Cadet Corps. Constituents will benefit. And I'm very pleased with the provision for playing fields. The Bellevue Plain Field Rehabilitation Project has started, Mr. Speaker, and I wish to thank the Member of Parliament for Grosile who promised it, and work has started on it. The construction of the, the building for, for the, the lights, I don't remember the name, the control room that has started, the excavation of the ground has started, and there's a big activity for Easter. So I told the, the, the contractors to stop for now. And we are going to continue after the community activity for Easter. So I should thank the Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Saturday before elections, the Member of Parliament for Castries East came to Viewfort North. Saturday before elections, it was night. We had this motorcade. And he went to the Bellevue playing field. And when he saw the condition, I told him, PM in waiting, that is what we must do. And on the microphone, he said to the people, when you vote for us, we are going to rehabilitate this field and we're going to put lights on it, Mr. Speaker. I am happy to tell the people of Bellevue, and they're saying it for themselves, that it has started, Mr. Speaker. There will be lights. We're working on the sitting area, washrooms in phases, but the lights will come first, the surface and everything, Mr. Speaker. I wish to thank the Prime Minister again for the work in infrastructure, community roads, I wish to thank the staff of SSDF, Mr. Speaker, for all of the work that they're doing to assist the people of Viefort North. I wish, Mr. Speaker, to say to you that the youth economy, the youth economy on the head 56, continues to benefit the people of Viefort North. And I want to tell the people of Viefort North that all of these programs, to say programs are, Mr. Speaker, your law a government may nuni pour lever 
You have to get up and get. Get up. Leave Bellevue, Grace, Vijay, Kako, wherever you are. Go to the offices of government. Come to the parliamentary office. We will help you. We have officers in the field. Lincoln Francis, Shomi and Popi. We have Angie Kedu. We have these people in the field to assist you. Go to the office, you'll meet Sister Angie Kedu. We have all the programs connected. Go to them and they will help you. Brother F. Albert, Albert St. Catherine with the housing. We are there to help you. We are not like the last government. We are helping everybody. And this is throughout the country, Mr. Speaker. So, get up and get. Come to us. We want to help you. Come to us. We are a government, a caring government. Come to us and we'll help you, Mr. Speaker. As I close, Mr. Speaker, I want to say to you that this Minister for Finance. I know you have five minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I close, I wish to say to you, Mr. Speaker, that this Minister for Finance is a better manager than the last Minister for Finance. A better manager. This Minister for Finance will keep St. Lucia safe. This Minister for Finance, over the last fiscal year, despite all the challenges, Mr. Speaker, we had a total revenue of $1.68 billion, a primary surplus of $104 million, 42 more than the last year, Mr. Speaker, 62 million more than the approved estimates. He's a better manager than the last Minister for Finance. The current surplus is 156 million, Mr. Speaker, 47 million more than the last year. The recurrent account surplus of 46 million or 39 million over 2023. Results show, Mr. Speaker, that this fiscal year was better than last year, Mr. Speaker. The economy has improved. And I remember the, the member for Castries South and Minister for Tourism always says to me in our discussions, a rising tide raises all boats. We always talk about these things. And the Minister for Finance, his skill, his, his dexterity, his passion for people, his passion for doing things right, has caused this economy to grow. Never, 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 never again, Mr. Speaker, should this country ever find itself in the hands of the former Minister for Finance, Mr. Speaker. I say to all those who assist me, my family, Mr. Speaker, my family who pray for me and who, who keep me, I say to those who love me and who pray for me, those who call me every day, those people in my constituency who, who work for me, who walk the ground, who campaign to ensure that they return me to the Parliament of St. Lucia, I thank you. Continue your prayers. I thank the Holy Spirit for giving me strength, Mr. Speaker. And I will use that strength by the Holy Spirit to do everything, everything that we have to do to ensure, Mr. Speaker, everything right, everything legal, everything on the ground to ensure that we give the people what we promised them. And for this side, the Member of Parliament from Mikusau, never, ever, 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 ever to return as Prime Minister in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.